everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. Before we get started, with this video going live, the giveaway for Hornet Leader is now closed. We'll officially wrap the giveaway up probably tomorrow night, with going through the comments on the giveaway video and pick our winner, and then I'll get the game out probably over the weekend after that. After our last battle out west in World War II Europe last week, we're headed to East this week for game number 8 on my TACUP Wargaming list. We're headed to the Soviet Union circa June 22nd, 1941, as we play Absolute War, the Russian Front 1941-45 from GMT Games. In this game, we're playing through some of the pivotal battles on the Eastern Front in World War II. Tomorrow in history, back in 1941, Adolf Hitler will make arguably his biggest mistake of World War II as he invaded the Soviet Union to launch Operation Barbarossa. And that's the scenario that's going to take center stage in this game. With that, let's head over to the board and set the scene for this scenario. I'm not going to detail every single unit we've got here. I'll explain how everything works when it becomes relevant, but we definitely are gonna be at this for, we'd, we'd be at this for a while if we did. And there's a lot to take in to explain as far as how each unit works, but this is the scenario is going to last six rounds. As you can see, the Soviet units are here in brown, whereas the German units are, or actually I should say the Axis units are in gray for the Germans, blue for Allied forces. So this is a scenario that's only going to last six turns from May, June 1941 to March, April 1942. You can probably see it along the board along the calendar here on the side of the on the side of shot we won't be going to that too much each side earns war status points we've got a resource track down here i'm just off shot and then combat points that i'll be using to help me keep track of stats for each for each side during an attack the germans actually will start with an offensive card in hand They'll start with Operation Barbarossa. We have to declare at least two major offensives during the during this first turn. We'll get into how that's going to work once we start jumping into the game. So, to borrow from the words of the evil Fuhrer himself, when Barbarossa is launched, all the world will hold its breath. With that last musing, we're ready to launch Barbarossa, so now is the part where the world holds its, holds its breath. So with that, let's jump in, and let's jump into the Germans' first turn. We also have a war initiative marker on the side of the shot, so it'll be on this side when the Germans have the initiative, and on this side when the Soviets do. We're going to assume that the Germans have the initiative until we come back to that, but... We'll get a couple of units on the Soviets' reinforcement turn. Generally, the way the turn works is it'll go the German player's turn will walk through the phases of the turn, then the Soviets will get their turn walking through the exact same phases. So we'll start off with the new turn phase, which we just advanced. The event phase, which is actually a surprise attack, will have special rules for this scenario, but we won't get too far into that. So what we've got here is now we jump into the actual German player's turn. So first thing we check for is supply phase. All of the German units can trace supply, including the Finnish unit. So we're all fine there. Nothing special happens there. Then we've got the combat marker phase where we'd pull any combat markers. We'd actually flip combat markers if we'd spent them on the board, but we haven't, so we're all clear there. Then we draw cards in the card phase so this is an opportunity where we can draw and discard cards. We would dr normally draw an offensive card, so just come back to the Barbarossa card for a second. We see it's got a red back. The Soviets will have all identical decks on this with different events, but the structure will be the same. So the red backed cards are the offensive cards. Cards in black are event cards that can be played whenever the card says they can be. So our first, first event card for the Germans is Elastic Defense. Play in the support step of the Soviet combat phase. Battle result is a DR. Put disrupted markers on participating Soviet units after the advance phase. 
I'll go through flavor text when it's actually relevant for us. Next up, Blitzkrieg, and I kind of glossed over this a little bit. So each each unit also has two different um, two different pieces of information on it in addition to the event, at least up top. So we've got year numbers over here, which indicate the years you can play this card. Additionally, you might have burst icons. I'll explain more about how those work when we come into combat, but that's where they'll be relevant. Play during your movement phase. In clear weather, give one supplied German stack an extra move. If it's a mobile stack, it may enter an area containing a Soviet stack and stop. So that's our second event there. The elastic defense. Here's actually an example of a unit with a burst icon on it. Like I said, that'll become relevant to us in combat. Then our next event card. Pacification campaign, which we don't have any... This one doesn't have a 41 icon, so we can discard it for for a resource. And assault guns, playing any support stat, step. Add one offensive burst to a stack or change the battle results to the next lower different result type. Again, we'll go through the flavor text when it actually becomes relevant. So we'll discard the pacification campaign to give the Germans an extra resource. That's it for the card phase. So now we go into the strategic phase where we do anything with like withdrawals, upgrades, reinforcements, replacements, reserves, and offensives. So here I think we'll set up, I think here's where we're supposed to set up what units attack. I should also, I should have probably mentioned this at the, the outset, but this is probably still going to be a very rough video. So I will apologize in advance for this unit, for this video still being a somewhat rough one. I'm... I've gotten it, I've, I've tried to practice this game a few times before it got on the channel, but there's still a lot to take in, so I'll probably be stopping to check the rules constantly just to make sure I've got everything straight on how everything works here, so, okay, so again, we have no withdrawals, no upgrades at this point, no reinforcements, no shattered units to deal with for replacements. Reserves, nothing there, and major offensive declaration. So, may, declare, may play any number of offensive cards. Okay, so we can declare... So we can declare major offensives now, it looks like. Basing player gets a number of major offensive markers, which we have the two there already. Okay, must be used in the next combat phase. So it looks like in the combat phase is when we start setting all of that up. Okay. So I think we'll, so we get, so technically we get these major offensive markers from the Barbarossa card, which there's a two there. We get those during the combat. We get those now, technically. So now we go into the movement phase and none of our units can move more than one unit, but that's actually not going to be a huge problem for us because we're going to move the 4th Army up to Brest, which will flip that into a German zone. Um, I think we are... I think that's all we're going to do for movement phase, is it? Um, no, I think we're going to stack these two together. We've got... We do have armor units, which can move up to three spaces, but they've got a disrupted marker. Large leg units, which can move up to two, and I don't know if this one, nope, that's just a two-step unit. All right, so we're stacking those together. Then the... Okay, then we've got the... Then we'll have small leg units later, which can only move up to one space. So we're stacking those together, and we've moved that in. So now, I think we are... I think that's it for the movement phase, so now we're going to go into the combat phase. Now is when we designate major offensive zones, so I'll designate Bialystok and Lvov as my major offensive zones. Then I'm going to place... what do I want to place? I'm going to assign an attack marker to the 4th Panzer. 
Um, one to the third panzer with the ninth army stack. And then one to the first panzer. So three attacks I think are what we're going to initiate in the in this first combat phase. One zone to be attacked, so we're actually attacking... So we're going to attack three zones. We're going to attack Kanas, Bialystok, and Lvov. That's what we're attacking, so we go through the combat sequence. First we'll go into the combat step. The Soviets, I should have mentioned this, the Soviets actually don't start with any support markers. They've got their... They've got 16 of them in a bag off shot that they're considered spent at this point. Just to kind of keep with the history of the... Just to keep with Stalin, the history of Stalin's purges of the Red Army before, before the Nazis attacked. So, we're all clear there. Now the Germans get the option to initiate for support. They have a total of, I believe it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 marker, 8 support combat markers. They'll put a support marker on the 16th Army. That will become relevant why we're... Um, I don't think we need the support marker. No, we might. Support marker there. We'll put a support marker on the 4th Army and one on the 17th Army. So that's how we'll do that. These three units down here, the 3rd Romanian the 11th Army and the 4th Romanian all have disrupted markers, so they can't really help with anything in this first sta stage of the game. So we've got that. So I'll go ahead and res start resolving our combats. We're going to attack into Kanas first. So each unit actually has a number of burst icons on it. In this case, the 4th Panzer has two gold and a silver, which is good for an attack strength of three. The 16th Army is actually not supporting this attack because I've got a plan for them later. To the northwest having a strength of two. So three for the Germans, two for the Soviets. Now that resolves as a battle, I believe, because of the clear terrain. Yes, which battle, I believe, involves flipping over the top card. No, I think that's Assault, actually, that does that. Let me just double check that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, right, strength step. Okay, subtract the defender's combat points from the attackers to get the final battle odds. So right now the Germans are winning by one, which means we'll draw the top card of their event deck. So they will draw. So based on the strength down here, their result is an AR, which will bring us to the... Which chart is it? Oh, the battle results table. So for an AR, that's attacker repulsed. And I forgot to assign the lift float, the Luftwaffe units to assist. Not that I think it would have made it... Now let's... Technically, I think we're supposed to do that during the... Strategic phase, I think. Um, yes, technically we're supposed to do that during the movement phase, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna retcon that and do that here. Right, 18-5. Out of its airbox can advance after combat, but cannot do mobile. So technically, we probably could move it. We technically could move now. I'm not going to use it for this combat, though. I will assign air units to the other ones. But coming back to our chart here. Attacker repulsed. Lead attacker in contested zone retreats one zone or loses one step. So this one's going to flip over to a one step, otherwise no effect. So that one loses a step. Then we're going to come to Bialystok. Once again, we'll go through the same combat sequence. The Soviets don't have any support markers that they can commit or event cards. Then the 
then the Germans actually will get to attempt what's known as a pincer movement here, which will affect us during the, which will come into, which will potentially come into play when we're resol resolving the results. So I think I saw the requirements earlier, but it's fairly involved. So the phasing player may attempt a pincer move, which blocks a defender's retreat and may form a pocket if there's a major offensive marker in the zone, and there is. The attackers, the lead attacker's top unit is a mobile armored unit, which we're using the, we'll flip that over, we're using the third panzer as our lead unit here. Defenders, the target's top unit is not armored, which that is not armored. The attacking, the attacker's steps are set up in two or more zones, which we're using the 16th army to support this from, what zone is that, from Lodzen. And then we've got the aforementioned third panzer and we're attacking into open terrain. So we are allowed, might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll bring this in. This is our pincer marker. So we are able to form a, we are able to attempt a pincer there, which will cut off, which will potentially cut off retreat for the, which will potentially cut off retreat for the Soviets there. Then we don't have any supply, any supplied units, or any, uh, not supplied units. We don't have any event cards that we're going to commit to this, and this is another battle. Actually, I will commit a, I will commit an air unit this time. So we'll commit an air unit here. So now we total up our attack strength, counting eligible, um, counting eligible combat, um, First, so we've got, so for the third panzer, for this whole stack, we've got one, two, three, four, five. I think we only count the, we wouldn't count the gray unit there, I don't think, on support. Actually, this is an attacking stack, so I think we do count it. And then we'll spend a resource to flip the major offensive marker. So that will be a total of, where did I put the, okay, here's the attack marker. So that's a total of seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the marker to two on the Western. So we'll draw from the deck again. This time we'll find, the highest these cards go is up to six. So DE, I believe is a result of Defender Eliminated. So we've seen the chart, which means we'll I've shown you the chart once, so we won't come back to it during the rest of the video. Area defenders retreat two zones, then the target is eliminated. So he would retreat to Minsk and Viteb Vitebsk. I'm going to also apologize in advance for my terrible Russian pronunciation. Then the lead attacker advances. I don't think there was... no. All right, so I can take the pincers and the major offensive off the board. And I'll replace it with a German, actually I can go back on the card. I'll replace it with a German pocket marker, which there's what that looks like. So if the Soviets aren't able to relieve the pocket before the turn is over, or before the Germans get to their next turn, then that will actually score victory points for the Germans. That's it for that battle. So now we'll go into the last battle, which will be down here in Lvov. We'll have another pincer attempt. We'll spend the resource marker to flip that. Once again, no support markers to, to flip. We'll put another pincer marker there because we are going to attempt a pincer move here as well from Krakow and Kosice. I totally butchered the pronunciation of that most likely. So four, five, six, seven to three. We can flip that to done as well. So we'll. So seven to three on a pincer move. Germans are winning by four. So seven to three, and we go to the event deck to get a result, we find. Four is a DE, which is another, which is the same thing we had for the first attack. So defender eliminated, which means they'll retreat two zones, one, two. Then they'll go to the destroyed units and then our attacker will advance which will flip that to done, flip that to done. Those will come off and we'll get another German pocket marker on the board. That was it for the attacks that we were initiating. I believe we can do, 
exploitation as well. If we have eliminated units, okay, advance after combat. The lead attacker and supporting stacks may advance. So actually, we could have advanced the fourth army into Bialystok as well. This one can advance into Lvov. The 17th army can advance into Lvov. All right, so now we've got that straight. If there's a major offensive zone and it's now controlled, so we can put that on the card as well to indicate that we control that we succeeded in another major offensive. Then we'd go through the reserve phase at this point, but we have no reserve units to worry about on the German side. Then we go through the count, the, uh, I believe it's the used marker phase. So now we pull all done markers off for the Germans. I'll put those down there. Now we'll go into the objective phase and I will draw a new, a new card from the deck. And this time, we're actually looking at this uh, this objective down below. So now we want to control Minsk or Rostov, which we can probably take at least at least Minsk on our next turn. Where is Rostov? That's what I want to know. Rostov, I believe, is somewhere out to the east, but I couldn't. But I wouldn't swear to it. Smolensk. Uh, I can't believe I didn't attack in Finland. I'll probably deal with that next turn. Rostov is... There's a map in here for it. I should be able to use that. In this book, I believe. Rostov... Ow! Rostov is all the way... Where was it? Oh, Rostov's down here. Rostov, uh, Rostov Nad Nadonu. Again, I probably butchered the pronunciation of that. So that's it for the Germans' turn. Before I take the Soviets' turn, I already need to take a small break. The Soviets are probably going to have a pretty quiet turn. They'll start by checking supply, but everything is in supply. No problems there. Then the combat marker phase just gives the Soviets their combat markers out of the out of the bag that I've put them in. So I'll stack those. I'll get those stacked up as well. Okay, next up we will draw cards. So the Soviets, the Soviets are stuck with their offensive card because they don't have the initiative at this point. So their offensive card is Russian Winter. Play immediately. If the weather is snow, get two general winter markers and declare a major offensive as soon as possible, except the weather's clear for them, so that's very unfortunate for them. And then they'll draw four cards. Hand limit is seven, by the way. So card for so first event card for the Soviets. Konstantin Rakosovsky scheme. Again, my Russian pronunciation is absolutely hideous. He's going to get discarded for a resource because we can't play him being in 1941. Heroes of the USSR, play any time to redraw the just-drawn battle results or remove disrupted markers from up to three Soviet stacks. It takes a very brave man not to be a hero in the Red Army. Allied bombings, which will probably get discarded as well for resources, and... Scorched Earth, which we can play in any strategic phase. The German player loses one card of his choice and one resource point. All valuable property which cannot be withdrawn, including grain and fuel, must without fail be destroyed. So we'll discard the two cards that we can't use to give the Soviet player two extra resource points to potentially max out it, to get up to four, maxing out at six. Then we've got the strategic phase. We're going through that phase in order. We have any withdrawals that we can do? Oh, okay, we'll actually do these in a minute. So we've got... Withdrawals that we don't have, upgrades which we may be able to make, but not in the not in this game. Reinforcements we can place the re turns reinforcements in the strategic reserve box or in a major city. We'll build the fort, which we'll have to spend a resource point to flip. 
We'll put that in Leningrad. And then the Maritime looks like it has to go near water, so I'll put that in... I'll actually put that in Moscow, I guess. Okay, so replacements, which we can... which we could deploy shattered units or use resource points to rebuild eliminated and reduced units. Reserves units on the map can go to the reserve box, which I believe doesn't cost... Okay, we'll actually move the reserve unit up to the Soviet... the reserve front up to the Soviet Strategic Reserve. And then we can bring that back out, I believe, for... Then we have to declare a major offensive, but I don't think the Soviets are declaring any offensives this turn. Actually, these disrupted markers should be gone. I think the only res the only offensive the Soviets might declare... Uh, they could try to relieve some of these pockets now that I look at it, but I think trying to do that would probably be a pretty bad idea on their part. But they also have movement options available to them. Um... Let's see, and then the reserves come out during the... The reserves can come out during the reserve phase. Which, those deploy in... Replace in any zone of the... Okay, we'll come, back, we'll come back to the reserve phase, but the reserve front's probably going to hit the board again. So what do the Soviets want to do for... movement phase? Um... I think they are going to try to relieve this pocket in Bialystok, but that's going to be a very dangerous play for them. What's the movement limit on the Martian Rough? It stops their movement, so the Central Front's going to move in there, which will stop their movement. The Bryansk Front will move forward to Conatop, and then, okay, that's just defensive, so nothing that we can do with the Karelian front or the Leningrad front. So that's all fine there. So moving phase is done. They will move into the combat phase next. And then yes, they are going to try to relieve, they're going to try to relieve both of these pockets. It's going to be a slightly crazy move, but then they're going to use the central front to try to relieve the pocket in Bialystok and the southern front to relieve the front, the pocket in Lvov. That's going to be their goal in the strategic phase. Uh, oh, I think we technically spend those during the combat phase, right? Yes, okay. The special combat result says otherwise. Okay, I was just checking on one combat. So, so the Soviets have declared their intentions to attack, which means the Germans can declare support, since they're the non-initiative player at this point. They will get support from the... Uh, which one gives them... Actually, they get good support from here to try to keep the pocket here intact, and then they'll get support from... The second panzer to keep Lvov, keep the Lvov pocket. As for the Soviets, where will they declare support? Um, they're going to get support from the Northwest Front and Kaunas. And I think that's about it. So now we'll have two combats to resolve, both of which are going to be over open terrain. So we'll deal with the combat in Bialystok first. The Soviets have an attack strength of 5, a combat strength of 5, to the Germans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Does that flip over to plus 10? Yes, it does. So this is a slightly suicidal attack, but the Soviets are losing by 7. They've got to try to get a decent result here. And A1, I don't think will do anything for them. So attacker defeated. Lead attacker retreats one zone, then loses one step. So the lead attacker was the central front. It retreats one zone, and then it only, only had one step to... Um, 
to retreat, so it goes to the destroyed units and the attack marker, it's flipped over, support to done. So no relief of pocket in Bialystok. As for the pocket in, as for the southern front attacking Lvov, which is a slight, which is another dangerous play, they have a combat strength of two to the Germans this time only having eight there, but that's still enough for the Soviets to be losing by six which is a reckless play on their part. AS, which is probably attacker shattered. Yep. Lead attacker retreats one zone, then goes to the shattered box. So lead attacker retreats one zone, then goes to the shattered box. That marker comes off. Then we go into the reserve phase where we can deploy reserves. We'll bring the reserve front down to Kharkov, because we're going to... Actually, let's bring that down to Odessa, because we're going to need that pretty far forward from the looks of it for the Soviets. Uh, that's it for the reserve phase. Then we have the used marker phase, where all of our done markers... Technically, those would have flipped to done as well. Those come off, as they do for the Germans. Then we have the objective phase. Once again, the Soviets don't have any war objectives, so their objective this time is trying to control Rostov and then Russian oil, or Romanian oil, I should say, which they are probably not going to meet the second objective of that. So we'll put that down here as our, as the Soviet war goal card. But that will do it for the Soviet's turn. It's end of turn. We don't have any conditions for war win. So we'll be into turn two and we'll be back to the Germans. I've advanced the turn marker to turn two. I'm again doing all, all the turn track stuff off shot. Then we've got the event phase, which here is the Stalin line where the, St where the Soviets were the Soviets tried to fortify the line, so we've got the SL here. We have to deploy these behind the Partisan Winter line. So I'll put the first unit... Hmm. With the German... Well, I should pretend that I don't know what the Germans are doing. So I think I'm going to deploy one there. And I'm going to put one here. So that's the Stalin line. Those will come to the Soviets on their next turn. That will go to the Germans on their... when we get to their uh, strategic phase. All right, so, okay, event phase, that's all done. Germans still have the war initiative. Then we go through the supply phase. Everything for the Germans can still trace initiative, or not initiative, can trace supply back to a major city. So we're fine there. Most of the time it's going to be Breslau or Konigsberg from the looks of it. Then after the supply phase, we go to the combat marker phase. So everything that we used gets flipped back over. And then these two pocket markers come off for the Germans. And then they'll score two war status points. So it'll go up to two war status points. Then we go into the card phase. Then we're back into the card phase. So the Germans will draw a new offensive card. They will draw... Expert staff work, play in your strategic phase. Examine the top three cards of your offensive draw pile. Keep one that is not play immediately. Discard the cards that were kept. Then we'll draw four event cards for the Germans. Three, four. First event card. Gold meet uns. Play anytime. Play the card that's on top of your discard pile. If timing allows and is not a play immediately card, we can probably keep that next up. Bottom of the barrel, which will probably go bye-bye for a resource point. Veteran Lancers, play any time. Redraw the just drawn German just drawn battle result or upgrade one German leg unit. Where is the German soldier of 41? He is dead, mein Führer. Somewhere in the Ru somewhere in Russia. That we can probably keep, and dropping the card, which is not what I had in mind at all. Soviet C31 failures. Play in the so support step of the Soviet combat, the Soviet combat phase. 
Lower the result, moving it to the left by one point for this battle and the next of this phase. No plan survives contact with the enemy. I'm not sure how much battle we're going to be doing in this phase, so... I think we can probably discard that for... Um, I think we can probably discard those two... Mm, Oh, that's my war objective. Never mind, I was about to pull it as a as an event card, but that's my current war status objective, which does not seem to be want to be keeping for me. There we go. Alright, so I'm definitely discarding the bottom of the barrel, and I'm gonna discard Soviet C31 C3I failures? I think I am for two more resources. We'll reset the combat points. So the Germans will go up to three resources. So that was the card phase, now we have the strategic phase. We don't have any withdrawals to worry about, no upgrades, no reinforcements, no replacements. Oh, we do have reinforcements. We have the second army, the German second army joining us, which I'll deploy into Warsaw. I want that as far forward as I can get it. Let's see, so this is during our, this is still during our strategic phase, I'll play the, I'll play expert staff work examining the top three cards of my offensive draw pile, keeping one that is not a play immediately. So, card one, is last ditch offensive, which will probably go away because I can't use it in this scenario. Hitler's War, which I might play, which I might keep, and... Typhoon, which I could also potentially keep. Um, I think I will keep Typhoon. But I'm not, I don't think I'm planning on declaring any major offensives this turn. So I'll kind of file that away for, I'll file that away for later on. So now in the, so now I think we're done with the strategic phase for the Germans. For the movement phase, we're trying to get to Minsk. So I think we'll bring the Luftwaffe 1, supporting the 3rd Panzer and the 9th Army into Minsk. We could try a pincer on the northwest, on the northwest front up here in Kaunas, which might be tempting. Um, so I think we will. I'll move the 16th Army into Bialystok and stack it with the 4th, with the German 4th Army. Then I'll bring the 18th Army out. 2nd Army can move forward into Lomza. It might be, it might be hard to see here somewhat, but there are some war crime zones like the ghetto in Warsaw, Treblinka, Babi Yar in Kiev. Those are, and Auschwitz down here in Krakow, those are, those are actually war crimes seen, war crime zones that are used in the advanced version of this game. Right now, this is, this is kind of a weird hodgepodge of the basic and advanced rules for this game. Then we'll move the 3rd Romanian and the 11th Army into Belzi. The 4th Romanian can move into Kishnia, Kish, Kishinev. That'll flip over to German control as well. And where do I want the 6th Army to move? I'll move the 6th Army to Lublin, and we'll bring the 2nd Panzer forward into Brest, and then move it forward into Pinsk, which will stop it there. Then... Um, actually, I lied. We are going to play the... We are going to play Typhoon to gain a resource, and I immediately have to declare a major offensive, which I'll declare one in Kaunas. I am going to try to pincer the Northwest Front out. So, going into our strategic... So, actually setting up our offensives. Actually, when do we... When do we assign the markers? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, I think... 
that does not seem clear to me when you spend the when you set up the combat markers. It looks like it's during the Amazing player decides which stack will initiate the attack. Okay, it looks like it's actually during the target location step. So we are targeting the Conos. We'll designate the fourth Panzer as our attacker. Then we'll designate the KA finish. We're going to have that attack the Mati, the Mati lands the Corellian unit there. Okay, so that's the target location. I'll set up. Then the Soviets have an option to declare support. Um, they will designate the Leningrad front to support the Karelian front against Finland. And they'll designate the... What units can actually provide support? I don't know if small leg units necessarily can. I don't... Oh, no, they can't. Okay, never mind. They actually can't. Those are only good on defense. So the fortified unit can't provide support either. Okay, so the Soviets don't have any support options to th available to them. The Germans, however, do. And I will designate the 4th Army with the 16th Army in support. Then I'll spend an ex then I'll spend a... Mobile marker on the 4th Panzer, because I'm expecting to be able to bring that forward. I'm expecting to be able to move that through. Which means I get to put a pincer marker there, then I'll spend a resource point to flip this over. So we only have, actually we have two offensives, and I do want to spend a support marker on the southeastern, on the, the SE Finnish front. So going after the, so we'll deal with the Corellian first. Combat strength of four for the Axis, one for the Soviets. The Germans are winning by three, so the result there. Winning by three is a DR, which I believe is, oh wait, this is an assault actually. So we have to flip over cards from the top of the deck. So that's a zero for the Axis, which leaves their strength at four. The Soviets. Gain two, so they go up to three, which just like that, the Axis is only winning by one. And then we could commit cards as well. Do I think the, the Soviets aren't going to commit to the Germans? Aren't, um, actually they are going to. They're going to commit assault guns for one, I think. I think technically committing is supposed to happen first, essentially. So, event cards can play one event card per combat and support. Oh, uh, wait. Card adds it's battle text or its SP value. So it's support point value, I believe is what that is. Yes. Okay, so we're at a five, so the Germans are at a five to three, thanks to that, which means they're still winning by two. So this result, by two is a bloodbath, which is nothing good. Attacker loses one resource or both sides lose one step. So we have to designate one unit to take a step loss. We'll have the, as he finished, take the step loss. And then the Soviets have to have that take a step loss, except it doesn't have another step loss to take. So I believe it goes to Shattered. Let me double check that. 1275. Um, it's eliminated. 1276. Okay, the top unit of the stack must be chosen. Um, okay, with only one step is eliminated. So in the destroyed box on their current counter side, so it's so actually the Corellian goes to the destroyed marker. Okay, so we've got all of that figured out. The southern, southern front, I think, was supposed to go there as well. So 
Now coming down to Kaunas, we've got the fourth Panzer with an attack strength of two, plus I believe only the top unit counts in support. So four, five for the major offensive to two on the northwest front. So the Germans are winning that one by three, which means the result there. Actually, I think that was the wrong result. I think that was the wrong thing that I did. So I think on the assault table, hold on. We actually have to consult a different table for the finish front. I didn't, re I didn't remember that. So coming back to that, I believe we were at five to three. So the attackers won by two. So target retreats one zone or both sides lose a step with an attacker advance. So the Karelian front will retreat to Petrozavodsk. And then everything for the finish will advance. Those will flip to done. Like I said, there's a lot to take in with this game. So I'm, I'm still, and I'm still kind of learning it a little bit. So that offensive is done. Okay, so coming back here, we've got two, three, four in support, five to two. So the Germans are winning by three, which means this is the this would actually be the card that we'd have for that. Defender retreat, except on a pincer. Oh, wait. Okay, so the pincer move actually is not successful. We didn't have an air unit in the assault. Wait, on a pincer move, is that anything that the... I gotta, I'm looking at this here, hang on. Uh, pincer move, I think on any retreat, the attack of the defender is eliminated. Target, okay, so when required to retreat, the owning player must move. Okay, so if a defender, so if a defender retreats, the the retreating unit is actually eliminated, which goes to the destroyed box. And I don't think... Oh yes, the attacker does get to advance. So they get to advance there. Support, so the attack's done. But the 4th Panzer will be doing a mobile exploitation. They'll be advancing to Devinsk, so that's done as well. And then we've done the... We've done everything there. The fourth Panzer is actually moving quite a lot, is moving along quite well. We'll grab a pocket marker for this pocket in Kaunas, which the Soviets are probably not relieving that. All right, so that's it for the combat phase. Reserve phase, Germans still have no reserve units to deploy. Then we go into the used marker phase. So we pull all of our done markers off. Technically, this would have flipped to done as well. Okay, then we check for our, then we check for the objectives. So as we see here, the Germans did get into Minsk, so they score another war status point. That resets to zero, but they didn't get to Rostov, which was all the way down here. So that will get discarded, and this card will become the new war status objective for the Germans. They want to get to Leningrad and then to Helsinki. So that unit needs to get into, so the Finnish need to get into Leningrad pronto. That's it for the Germans' war status turn. That's actually it for the Germans' turn two. So now let's go into the Soviets' turn. Starting for the Soviets' turn, everything can trace supply, so they're all fine there. I want to turn that that way so I can actually read it from this side of the board. Then we go into the combat marker phase, so everything they used which wasn't, which admittedly wasn't much last turn, comes back. Then we draw a new card, so the Soviets will get a, what's this? Okay, right. So the Soviets will get a new offensive card, they will find. Stalin's War, play any time. Cancel a just played Operation Barbarossa card, or declare a major offensive as soon as possible. The only real power comes out of a long rifle. And then the Soviets get four event cards. One, two, three, four. 
Once again, without the initiative, they can't really do much here as far as offensives. So, first event. Hitler intervenes. Play any time. Cancel the just played, not discarded card that is not a play immediately. Something offensive or Hitler's war card. Then draw one event card. Life never forgives weaknesses. Next up. Flying tanks, which will probably go bye-bye for resources. Ivan Konev, playing any support step, add one yellow burst to a stack in the battle zone, and a battle of three or more becomes a DR if you have armor, then draw one event card. I want volunteers for the job. And... Show No Mercy, which will probably also get discarded for resources, which luckily enough will max the Soviets out on six resources. So card phase is done. Then we go into the strategic phase. We've got no withdrawals. Reinforcement phase. So we get a... We get the Kalin in front and another fort. We'll put the fort on Moscow. And we'll put the Kalin in Kharkov. All right, so reinforcements are done. Replacements, we don't have any replacements. Reserves, I believe, is deploy from the reserve. We can move it over. We can move them over for... Um, they go to your strategic reserve box. And get back to the map during the reserve phase. So the strategic reserve, we can move... Our armies arrive in the reserve for one resource. So we'll spend four resources, bringing the Soviets down to two, to move the central front, the southwest front, the western front, and the northwest front all to the reserves. And then those move for combat markers during the reserve phase. I believe or during, yeah, during the reserve phase. Deploy units from a strategic reserve box. Yes, looks like those move during the... Looks like those move during the reserve phase, I think. Uh, I can deploy up to four units from his map. Okay, now, okay, can... Get back to the map during the reserve phase. Okay. All right, so the Soviets aren't declaring any offensives, probably aren't declaring any major offensives this turn. Um, are they really doing much, though? <sighs> probably not. Move each unit... I'm still, I'm still confused about how the reserves work, and the... The rule book is actually not very clear about that. That's not the last time you're going to hear me complain about the rule book either, by the way. Just fair warning on that. Um, from the map. Okay, replace. Oh, those have to move during the replacements phase. It looks like so. If they're in the, so if they're in the destroyed, can we move to the can we move to the strategic reserve box at a cost of one resource point? So I did. Okay, so I did that correctly. Those were all in the destroyed marker, in the destroyed um, box. Okay, so the... Right, so what are we doing this turn? I think the Kalin in front is going to move up to Pat Poltova. Leningrad front isn't going to do anything. When can I flip forts? Uh, the one combat marker during the strategic phase. So I'm actually in the movement phase right now, which means that won't, which means I won't be able to flip that. So that's it for the movement phase. Combat phase, like I said, the Soviets aren't doing anything on that front this turn. Reserve phase, we can deploy our reserves. So we'll bring the central front to Kharkov. The southwest front can go to 
Kiev to hold the line there. The Western Front can go to Verdens, and the Northwest Front will leave the Northwest Front in reserve for the time being. That's the reserve phase. Use marker phase. The Soviets didn't use any combat markers this turn. Objective phase. The Soviets might actually score incidentally. They will score for Rostov, but not for Romanian oil. Nope, not combat points. War status. Then the Soviets will get a new event card for an objective. Gorky and Rostov are their objectives. So that is it for the for Soviet turn two. So now we're into turn three, and we'll lead off with the Germans. Turn three, we've done the new turn phase on the marker. Then we go into the event, which is the death squads. So as the Germans bring the Einsatzgruppen up to commit the various atrocities on the Eastern Front, they will lose one of their attack markers. I'll put that back in box. So that's all handled there. Um, then they do get the Axis. AK unit. We'll come back to that during the we'll come back to that during the strategic phase when we get reinforcements in. Combat markers will get recycled. Then we'll draw our new cards, so our new offensive card. War economy, which we can toss and redraw since we have the initiative, but we're stuck with this one. Citadel. I think we can also toss this one for resource points. For resource points, which we're going to need to if I'm planning on flipping the what is that? The fourth Panzer back. Uh, let's just look at the supply phase. We're fine there. The war initiative. Okay. All right, so it looks like we can't toss this one. So we're stuck with this one, but we get four event cards. When do we discard down? I believe that's at the end of the... No more than six cards of any type can be in the player's hand at the end of the phase. So we have to discard down. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll have to discard at the end of this phase. So our first card here. Fickle Climate. Play immediately to reshuffle your draw and discard piles to form deck, new decks. If the weather is snow, which it's not, it's rain. The Soviet player gets two general winter markers. Never invade Russia in winter. Duly noted. Heavy Ordnance. Play in any support step. Choose Add one sun, yellow sunburst to a stack. And choose one Ford or Sevastopol in, in the combat zone, if any, to suffer a step loss after combat. Artillery conquers, infantry occupies. Where iron crosses grow, redraw one just drawn battle result and lose one war status point, then draw one event card. I will show you how a true Prussian officer fights. I think we'll discard that, which reminds me the pocket comes off and the Germans gain another war status point. And our last car event card. Rookie Commanders, play anytime. Cancel a just played combat card or lower or raise the just drawn battle result by one point. Everybody has the right to be stupid, but some people abuse the privilege. So we'll discard the... Well, we have to play the Fickle Climate, but I'll discard the where iron crosses grow for a resource point. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I will discard the elastic... Um, I'm going to discard Got mit uns. Mostly so I can play Fickle... Mostly so when I play Fickle Climate, I'm reshuffling that in. And since the weather is not snow, since the weather's not snow, I'm not giving the Soviets the two general winter markers, which are potentially additional offensives.
Right, so that is all shuffle and cut. Pickle climate's done. Card phase is done. Strategic phase, we've got no withdrawals. Upgrades, we are going to spend two resource points. Actually, can they even make upgrades during Barbarossa? I thought I saw a rule that the Germans couldn't. Uh, never mind. Looks like they can. So, so as I mentioned, the Germans will spend two resource points to flip their fourth Panzer back into their into its full strength. Okay, so now we can. Okay, so that was upgrades, reinforcements. The Axis AK comes in. This is a, this is an, an immobile unit, is it? No, it's a small leg unit, which only has a strength of one. It will deploy in Konigsberg. Okay, so that was reinforcements, no replacements, no reserves to worry about, no and offensives. Are we playing this offensive card? Uh, oh, Citadel is actually in 43, so I can't even use this. I'll have to keep an eye on that, but... Uh, what are our goals this turn? Leningrad and Helsinki. Uh, well, I think we are definitely going to attack in Leningrad this turn. We're going to try to take that. And we do have control of Helsinki, so... Okay, so the question now is, where do we want to attack? I think I'll bring the 4th Panzer to Vigeland. And do I want to bring it down to Vyazma? Which will get, put us in great position to move on Moscow next turn. I think I will do that, actually. Then the 4th Army will move behind it. Moving 1, 2, and I'll spend a... I'll spend a support marker so they don't get disrupted. I'd have to put a disrupted marker on there, on a unit that moves to its maximum, unless... I spend a combat marker and I will spend the I will spend a support marker because I don't think I'm gonna need too many of those this turn. Let's see, then I'll stack the Actually I think what we'll do here is we'll move the first panzer up here because I'm gonna to try to go after Kiev this turn. Actually does Kiev allow it looks like Kiev does not allow for a pincer move, so I, I might still want to take Kiev, though. That's actually a pretty tempting target. I may do the same thing with trying to take Odessa. That's Actually, that's a little less tempting, just because I can't get my strength up on that. Um, I'll move the 18th Army forward. I'll bring the 2nd Army forward as well. Then I'll move the 3rd Panzer forward. One, two. We're gonna try to go from we're gonna try to go from Moscow pretty early here. Before winter starts to slow us down, but I think we're probably almost General Winter is gonna freeze us completely out, I think. Uh Actually, wait a minute. Since it's still Marco Weather, I believe that's unit movement maximum. So I might have to back that whole thing up. Uh, weather effects eight. He gets back only one used. There's a number of. Attack markers. Okay, so I need to know the effects on weather. 11.3. Effects. Okay, Leg and mobile units, maximum movement. And how many air units? The other air units must stay in. So we're in snow. 
So I think, I th actually I think in rain we're still fine. So we can only have, actually since it's mud, we can have two air units on the map. We only have one right now. We'll send the lift float two up with the fourth panzer because they're gonna need support getting into Moscow. Okay. Effects leg mobile units maximum. Okay, so I think movement's all fine there. We've got that. Now that we've got that somewhat straight. So I think movement is for the most part done. As for combat, uh, what are we attacking with this turn? I put the attack markers down. So now we're moving into the combat phase. We'll designate the finish to attack. I think we'll have the second panzer attack as well. And do I want to just go ahead and wipe out the wipe out the lapel and be done with it? I think so. I think we'll go ahead and do that. Then for support, I don't think the Soviets have anywhere they can, oh yes they do have somewhere they can get support actually. They can get support from the Bryansk front as we're attacking Kiev. And from the Kalinin, no, Kalinin is not adjacent to Kiev, so never mind that, but they will get support there. As for the Germans, the support they get... Um, the Finnish will provide support on the Leningrad attack. The Second Army will provide support on the Stalin Line 1 attack. And then the first panzer on the move into Kiev. So moving from, we'll move from left to right essentially. So the Finland attack has a strength of three to a defense of two. And that's a major city. So I think that gets resolved as, is that a war aim? I think that's probably a war aim major city. Yes, it is. So a war aim major city actually gets resolved as an assault. So we're actually in the support step right now, which means the Soviets have an option to... Um, okay, they will... They're actually not going to play anything here. The Germans will... play a... They'll play heavy ordnance on this one for both effects during an assault. They'll get the sunburst from that, and they'll get to add one sunburst to a... I believe they get both during an assault, if they play a card for that. Um, draws the top card and adds its support. Okay, so actually I think we just... Okay, so yeah, the Germans will actually commit the sunburst for one. So right now they're at a strength of four. So right now they're at four to two. The Soviets will draw a card from their event deck. They will find a zero and then the Germans will find a, will find a one. So they're winning. So the Germans win the attack by three. Attacker plus three. Target retreats two zones, or target loses one step. Except the target only has one step to lose. The fort gets flattened, and then the attackers advance. So the whole stack... I believe... What's this? Is there a stack limit on major cities? Um, probably... God, this is such a jumbled... Let's see, major cities... 20.3, wait, actually I think I want to know, there should be a section on stacks, 3.3. Um, up to one or two leg or mobile units, so those are both leg units up in Helsinki, or up in Leningrad, so those both get flipped to done. And then before we come back to our next attack, I need to take a small break. Coming back to battle, we're going to resolve the attack on Lapel next. So we've got, so that's going to be just a simple, that's going to be a simple battle. 
So we're looking at one, two, three, four to one. So the Germans are winning that one by three, which means we go to the top card of the German deck we find. A three is an AA, which I believe is an attacker advance. Yes. Lead attacker advances, but no mobile exploitation possible. So they don't retreat then? That seems weird to me, but oh well. We can't have two stacks. I believe is it two opposing stacks? Hmm. They're probably going to have to fight it out, but... Mm. No advance if the attacker is already in the target zone. Um... I think I thought I saw something about a limit of still containing enemy stacks. Okay, so yeah, we can't advance in there. Then we've got our last attack down here in Kiev. All right, so that's that, that's done as well. Four, five, six to three. So the Germans are winning by three. Is Kiev a war aim city? No. It is a major city, though, which is still resolved as an assault. All right, so top card of the deck for the Soviets. Right now we're at six for the Germans to three for the Soviets, we find. One for the Soviets, so they go up to four. And for the Germans... Nothing, so the Germans are winning by two which on an assault, assault successful. Target retreats one zone, or both sides lose a step. Target's going to retreat one zone, and then attacker advances. So they get into Kiev. And then that's it for the Germans' turn. That support marker is done as well for the Soviets. Combat's all done. Reserve phase, we could deploy reserves, but we don't have any reserves to worry about here. Used marker phase, all done markers come off the board. Which was actually a pretty eventful turn for the Germans. And we have a support marker for the Soviets as well that comes off. So combat markers are all done, used markers are done. Objectives. The Germans took Leningrad, and they control Helsinki, so they're scoring two war status points, going up to six. And then the Germans will draw a new card for their war status objective. Riga and Kiev. Right, so that's the Germans' new objective. That's it for the Germans' turn. Now let's go into the Soviets' turn three. Seems likely it's going to be a pretty quiet turn for the Soviets. We'll start off with the supply phase. Um, from a major city, actually there might be starting to be some units that can't trace supply. So I think everything, the Corellian can trace supply, that can trace supply obviously. These can trace supply, I think Bryansk can as well. Odessa, Sevastopol. Mm. I gotta figure out how supply works. I'm, I'm wondering if the fortified, if that fortified unit for the Stalin line might not be able to trace supply. 7.0. That's another thing that I've been finding is not very clear in this game. Okay, the stack. Not trace one or two zones supply line from itself to a friendly supply source. Um, okay, wait a minute. 
Okay, if a if a snack can't trace to friendly supply Yeah, I don't think let's see one, two Okay, I think the fortified one can trace supply actually, so I think we're fine. I think we're fine there. Somebody will probably correct me in the comments down below. In fact, I'm I will admit again that I'm stumbling through this game, so I will welcome feedback on this one in the comments below, but once again, be constructive about it, please. Okay, so now we'll flip over combat markers. We'll get a new offensive. So here we'll find Suvarov, which we won't be able to play. We can't even discard it because we don't have the war initiative right now for the Soviets. One, two, three, four. Event phase for the Soviets, we find... Georgi Zukov playing any support step. Draw a battle result from the German deck, and you may put a pincers in the battle zone if you have armor. If we come to a minefield, our infantry attacks as if it were as it were not there. NKVD and penal units, which will go toodaloo for resources. Soviet steamroller, which also will go away for resources, and. Rasputitsa, play in any support step. Put disrupted markers on all units participating in this combat just before mobile exploitation, then draw one event card. General Mud will stop them. So we've got two cards that are going away for, for resource points. And then the Soviets, one, two, three, four, five, would be at hand size, but I think they're going to keep everything. So, looking at the Soviets' turn, their strategic phase, they've got no withdrawals. They do have reinforcements. They don't have upgrades either. They do have reinforcements coming. They've got the T. Kokakis, which they'll put in Moscow. They'll put another fort down in Varenz. And then we establish that we flip during the... We flip forts during the... Okay, during the strategic phase, which we are, which I think we're actually in the middle of now. So at the cost of one combat marker, which will flip a support marker, because I don't think we're doing too much for combat, the Soviets will flip Moscow into a full fort. They'll actually flip a, another support marker to flip the fort in Varenz to a, to a fort. Do we have any shattered units? We do have still destroyed units, so we'll spend two resource points to rebuild those units into the reserve. The Leningrad Front and the Southern Front. Okay, then major offensive declaration, but I don't think the Soviets are declaring any offensives this turn. Um, yeah, they're probably not doing much this turn. Unless they throw in the southwest front and try to relieve Kiev. Actually, that might not be a bad idea to try to get them some relief on Kiev. So, I think we will move into the combat phase. They will declare an attack using the southwest front on Kiev, but that will be the only attack they declare this turn. Then for support, the Germans will... Uh, they don't really have anything to support with, but they're, both of their panzer divisions are defending there. So the Soviets will declare support from the Bryansk front. And looking at the... that's an assault. So the Soviets are looking at a combat strength of four total, because only their, only their yellow sunburst counts, to a German combat strength of eight. So now we'll flip over cards from the top of the deck. The Germans first will flip over. Two more to go up to ten. And then the Soviets will flip over. One to go up to five. But that's still a defender plus five result. 
So the assault is defeated. The lead attacker retreats one zone, then loses one step. So the lead attacker here was the southwest front. They retreat, then lose a step, going back to the destroyed box again. So that marker's done. Um, they can't break Kiev. So that was it for the combat phase. Reserve phase, they'll deploy the reserves. They'll bring the southern front to Vorenz. Actually, i got to be aware of stacking limits, too. And the northwest front will go to Kharkov. All right, that's it for the reserved phase. For the reserve phase, the used marker phase, everything that they used comes off the board. And then we check for the objective phase. They control Gorky and Rostov, so the Soviets will score two war status points, bringing them up to three, so they're not completely out of the game yet. Just mostly out of the game. But that is it for round three. We're into round four now, and the Germans are looking to make their move pretty soon on Moscow. War initiative remains with the Germans, but only for this turn. Pearl Harbor will give the Soviets two war status points, which will bring them up to five. And should I have been scoring for war aim cities? Is it war aim sites or just all major cities that I score for? Because the Germans probably should have more points. Um, large unit capture. The Germans have been capturing large war units like crazy. So actually, the for an enemy-controlled major city. So yeah, Minsk, Kiev should probably have the Germans with two more war status points. They're, they should be at eight right now. Um. Okay. Now that we got that major offense that scores one war status point for each location he controls. Okay. I think we got, um, I'm just checking some other stuff here. That was probably a captured site at some point, but I'm not going to score that. So I did give the Soviets their two war status points for Pearl Harbor for the event. All right, supply phase, everything's fine for supply for the Germans there. Then we go into the combat marker phase, so everything flips over. Um, right, so, so combat marker phase is done, so now we draw cards, the offensive for the Germans, is case blue, which plays during your strategic phase, gain two resource points, but you must immediately declare a major offensive, this is the Stalingrad offensive, we need Soviet oil. Which I might be I might be playing that anyway. Even though we're not aiming at Soviet oil right now. One, two, three, four. Looking at our first event card for the Germans, we find Kampfrat. Play at the end of the Soviet movement phase. In clear weather, any one supplied German stack in a German controlled zone can do a mobile exploitation. Strike hard and fast, don't separate. I, wait a minute, am I even able to stack units together like that, or do they all have to be the same? Ay, ay, ay. Um. Okay, it doesn't say anything about having to stack like units together, so...
Okay. So anyway, we've got the comp craft as the as our first draw. Second draw. Shock troops playing the support step of the German combat phase. Cancel one terrain bonus, if any, and an AR battle result becomes an AA instead. Boot them. Don't spatter them. Next up. No retreat, which will probably get discarded, and... Gotterdammerung. Play immediately. If the Soviets control at least four zones outside the USSR, lose three war status points, and then check the war status or initiative at the start of the next turn. It will be a thousand-year Reich. So, as I was saying, we'll discard that card for one resource point. And I think we'll discard the Kampfcraft for another one, because we're not seeing clear weather again for the rest of the game. That will leave me at, after I play that card, one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll be at Exaxes. So I do have to play that immediately, but the Soviets don't control anything right now outside the USSR, so we're fine there. So that will get discarded. That was the card phase. Strategic phase, we don't have any withdrawals. No upgrades we can worry about, no reinforcements, replacements, reserves, but we will play Case Blue. Actually, no. We won't play Case Blue. I think we're fine there. So we'll actually just jump right into the movement phase, which will see the... which will actually see the 3rd Panzer and 9th Army stack move 1, 2 to Tula during the movement phase. I think we're going... I think we're going for Moscow this turn. And then the 4th Panzer will go for... will go for there as well. Then we'll bring the 4th Army and 16th Army leg stack 1, 2. And we'll spend a support marker to keep the... We'll spend a support marker so they don't get disrupted. Um... Then I'll move the second army to what are our obje what are our objectives again? Oh yes, Riga and Kiev, which we already hold. Kiev. So I'll move these two units up, the third Romanian and the eleventh army up to Zitomir. Probably butchered the pronunciation of that as well. Sixth army will start moving to Brest, and the seventeenth army up to Pinsk. Then in the combat, then as we move into the combat phase, we are going to spend a couple of, at least a couple of attack markers. So I'm going to designate the, I'm going to designate the Luftfloat 1 with the 3rd Panzer and the 9th Army as my main attacker. Then I'm going to send the 4th and 16th Armies into, mm, sending them into Varenz seems like a really bad idea right now. Maybe I want to wait and get them some reinforcements first. Um, right. I think I will have the second Panzer attack as well. And I think that will do it for attack markers. Then the Soviets will look for support. Um... They actually have no units that can readily support, I don't think, no. Whereas the Germans do have some support options available to them. So they will spend the, they'll spend a support marker on this fourth Panzer and the lift float. And the first Panzer will provide support as well for the attack on what is that? Kona top. So I'll move over to Moscow first. The combat strength of the Soviets there is three to the Germans having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they're at eleven to three, but this is an assault, so we'll flip over cards. Actually. Um, okay, that's a... Right. So we'll play Ivan Konev to add one 
during the support step to add one one sunburst to a stack in the battle zone. So we'll add one to the T Kakakas, which is probably third. And a battle of three or more becomes a DR, but we're playing this, but this is an assault. Assault, I don't think I can use the text on these. Um. Oh, um. Okay, one special support marker. Okay, so that's the. Right. Okay, so this this is a support step, so we can play that. So that becomes a stack of four. And then what will the Ger will the Germans play anything? Right now they're winning by seven. Um, they will, they'll actually sit tight. So now I'll flip over cards for the additional bursts. We will draw. One for the Soviets, bringing them up to five. And then the Germans. We'll find three more to bring them up to 14. So 11, actually that's 14 to five. That's an attacker plus six. Target retreats two zones or target loses one step. So everything in Moscow presumably retreats two, two zones. One, two. The fort I would assume gets flattened. At least that's how I'm gonna play it. Then the attackers get to advance. So the Germans will gain another war status point going up to nine, and they have taken Moscow. Okay, so what's the... There was a card thing there for... Moscow, but I didn't see... Victory locations. Okay. Alright, so... They score that during. Okay, it looks like they score that during the. Oh, they score that now when they capture it. Okay. Right, so we've got that all figured out. So now the Germans are up to nine war status points. Then looking at the battle, and so those are flipped over to done. So now looking at the battle in Konatop. We've got four, five, six to two. That's going to be a simple battle. So six to two, the Germans are winning by four. So they'll draw a battle result. They will draw. Four is for bloodbath. Attacker loses one resource or both sides lose one step. The Germans will lose the resource and then nothing happens there. Okay, so combat's all done, which means we go into the reserve phase, but there are no reserves to deploy. Then the used marker phase, all of our done markers come off the board. Okay, that's all done. Objective phase, so now we check for the Germans' objectives. They control Riga, actually, they never moved into it, so they don't control Riga, so I'm going to rule that they don't score for that. And then the Germans' new objective. Tula and Moscow. Tula's right here. Moscow we just took. The Germans just took. So that will become the Germans' new objective. Then we're going to move into Soviet turn four. The Soviets have only one way to spin that turn. Unmitigated disaster having lost Moscow and now Leningrad. So as far as supply checks go, um, now that Moscow's gone, there might be some, there might start to be some, some supply problems, but I think, I think most everything's fine there. So actually with Moscow and Leningrad now gone and Verdun's threatened, they might be, the Soviets might be starting to face some serious problems here. So. Supply is all fine. Combat markers get recycled. I don't know how much attacking the Soviets are doing this turn. 
But we'll find out. We've got the card face, so they draw a new offensive card. They draw... Kutsov, which they're stuck with. They can't use it. And then four events. They are at one, two, three, four, five. They'll be discarding down. Two, three, four. Assuming these aren't all garbage that we find. Nazi real politic, which we play immediately. If any Axis unit is in the destroyed or captured boxes, the Germans must discard one random card or lose two war status points. His choice. Great Britain provided time, except they didn't provide much time from the looks of it. That'll be a play immediately. Next up. Five-year plan, which will get discarded for resources. Front of it guts play in any reserve phase. Remove two disrupted markers from up to two Soviet stacks. Then you may and you may deploy one destroyed Soviet fort front side up. Once dug in, they will hold or die. And Alexander Vasilevsky, which we can't use anyway, so we'll discard those two for two resource points, which will bring the Soviets back up to four. Uh, when do we get to check for instant victory? Because I know that can be a thing. Um... At least four war aim sites, which I don't think the Germans would control. They control right now two, but they could definitely head for Gorky with not too many problems. Actually, they might turn and head for... Actually, they might try to win the game here pretty soon, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've got to discard one more, which will be Frontovic Guts. Okay, so that's all handled there. Uh, wait. The Soviets should have had a... Should have had an objective card, but... Um... I don't remember what it was unless it got... Oh, I think I know what happened. Uh, one of these cards was... I think this was their... Stat their objective card, Kiev and Riga. They're not scoring that anyway, but let's see what the Soviets are doing. Because we did the card phase. No withdrawals. Do we have any... No upgrades. We have reinforcements. We'll put a fort on Stalingrad, because that may be where the Germans are turning next. They could also turn potentially for Sevastopol, which might be a better idea for them. Uh, shock one, we'll put in. We'll put that here because that's an option. And then the vol oh, that's got to go in a major city. So we will. I guess we will put that in Sevastopol. And then Volkov, we'll put that in Gorky. Even though we probably need units further forward than that. Right. So reserves. We'll move the southwest front over for another resource point to the reserve. Then we go for the movement phase. Are the Soviets attacking anything this turn? Um, they probably should attack something. I think they'll bring the Kalinin down here and move the central front to Kursk and the northwest front to... Uh, Poltava. And yeah, I think they're pretty much going to have to abandon Moscow at this point. So, they'll also spend... Actually, we're in the movement phase right now. I've got to remember that. So, combat phase, the Soviets aren't doing anything... Mm. No, I think the Soviets actually... Actually, that attack into Kiev would be pretty suicidal right now. But, so yeah, the Soviets aren't going to do anything in the combat phase. Reserve phase, they can deploy reserves. We'll spend two support markers to bring the Leningrad front. We'll send that to Stalingrad. And the southwest front will go to Gorky. Just in case the Germans decide they're going to try to win by instant victory. But they do need to keep in mind that we're heading into general winter next turn. 
So, okay, used marker phase. We didn't use anything there. The Soviets, again, were not scoring for their objective. So we'll draw a new event card. We will draw Kiev and Kharkov, which they're probably not scoring anyway. So we become the Germans' new, or the Soviets' new objective card. With that, we're into turn five, and the Germans are going to try to finish this game pretty quick. Unfortunately for the Germans, two things are happening that are going to make their job a lot harder. General Winter has arrived, which will, cause, which will also cause a change in the initiative going to the Soviets. Which means they are, they're stuck with their offensive card that they draw, but they get their first fort of the game. Uh, war status check. What does the war status check mean? 6.4. Do we check? Does that just mean we check for instant victory, or... Okay, the player with the highest total of war status points now has war initiative and gets... Okay, so yeah, we, initiative switches to the Soviets because of General Winter. So General Winter is probably coming to the Soviets' rescue. The only question is if it's too late. The Soviets are hoping like hell it's not, but... Let's see what the Germans are doing this turn. So they can trace so they can trace supply everywhere. The goal here, the goal here for the Germans might be just to try to close this game out. Sixteen point one. The end of the general winter turn, then they should have automatically switches back. Okay. Okay, so the Soviets have two General Winter markers that they can use during the turn if they're going to try to turn the tide, and they might have to here. Um, that's during their turn, though. So right now we have Leningrad, Moscow. The Germans could aim at Gorky, but I'm getting ahead of myself there because I'm totally skipping through the Germans' draw cards, so they're stuck with this offensive which is OKW transfers. Play in your strategic phase. Upgrade one German unit in the strategic reserve and gain one resource point or gain a war status point. Welcome to the Russian front. Gee, thanks. And then four, card, four event cards the Germans will draw. Roving pocket during any reserve phase. Remove an unsupplied marker from one German stack that stack may immediately move. Lebensbraum, if you control at least one zone in the Soviet Union, gain one war status point. If not, lose three, which we do. Heinkels and Stukas, play in any support step. Add one yellow sunburst to a lift float, and you may remove an unsupplied marker from one German stack. Guns make us powerful. Butter merely makes us fat. And... Once again, I'm dropping cards. Don't mind me. And experienced officers play in any support step. Draw two cards and choose one for the battle result or change the battle result to the next higher or lower different result. Men like them are our only hope. All right, so I think we'll discard the roving pocket for resources. And then we'll have to discard down because we have more than six event cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We actually have eight, which I'll play. I'll discard Blitzkrieg and Experienced Officers. All right, so we play Lebensbraum. Since we control at least one zone in the Soviet Union, we gain one war status point going up to ten. And then we check the war initiative at the next turn. We must expand or die was the flavor text, by the way. All right, so card phase is all done. Strategic phase, we have withdrawals, upgrades, 
which we don't have any upgrades to worry about. Reinforcements, we got our first fort, which we'll put down on... We'll put our fort down on Moscow. How do you like that? Which we can then immediately flip. I skipped right through the combat marker phase. So these combat markers that the Germans used last turn should have been recycled. Is there a movement limit during general winter? I don't think so. I didn't see anything about that. Um, okay, actually there is a movement limit during snow. Oh, for, okay, so yeah, looks like, looks like two movement points and one air unit. So we'll move the Luftfloat 2 back to the German air units. So the so during so we're during a strategic phase, which means we can pay a combat marker. We'll pay a support marker to flip this fort in Moscow. So the question is: Do we aim at? Do we try to take Gorky? I think we do actually. As crazy as it sounds. So we're in the so we're in the movement phase now. Yeah, we're in the movement phase. So I think we'll send the um. Actually, those general winter markers are good for stat are good for any stat, aren't they? So I think we'll send that fourth. If I send the fourth and the sixteenth armies towards Stalingrad, they're going to get picked apart. So I think actually pretty much anywhere I send them they're going to get picked apart by the winter by general winter so where do I want to send the Germans at this point we could try a pincer we could go for a pincer move here Maybe bait them into trying to relieve that pocket. Actually, we could probably go for a couple pincer moves here, but we're not able to declare a major offensive, I don't think. Um, no, we don't have anything that's going to let us declare a major offensive. So I think we'll actually just... Mostly, I think the Germans will just sit tight. They're not going to do any combat this turn. So they're going to pass on the combat phase. They don't have any reserve, any reserves to deploy. They didn't deploy any markers. Then as far as their objective phase goes, they had two of the last turn, which I'll rule that they still controlled. And then Moscow will give them another two war status points. And then that doesn't check until the... Until the Soviet turn is over as well, I believe, right? Yes, that would check for instant victory. Okay, so that will do it for the Germans' turn after we draw them a new... Actually, yeah, we're going to draw them a new objective card just in case the game doesn't end here. Lvov and Sevastopol. But there is a chance that the game could just... Actually, no, the game won't end here because they won't have the objectives to make it end. So let's move into Soviet turn five. For Soviet turn five, we'll start off with a supply check, but everything looks good on that front. Yes, everything looks good there. Then we'll go into the combat marker phase so everything gets recycled. Oop as I drop one of the Soviet support markers. Then they'll draw a new offensive card, which they can change out because they have the initiative. So they find Nazapod, which is a play immediately. You must declare a major offensive as soon as possible. Check the war status, check the war initiative at the start of the next turn. This is 1941 to 45 follow-up offenses. Onto the lair of the fascist beast. So the Soviets will have to declare a major offensive. One, two, three, four. Four event cards for the Soviets, they find. 
Maskirova play at the end of the German movement phase, deploy, deploy one Soviet fort frontside up and deploy up to two units from the strategic reserve. Ah. They have misjudged the Red Army. For the motherland, play any time. The just drawn AA battle result is treated as BB. You then gain one war status point. It is not heroes that make history, but history that makes heroes. Raiding cavalry, play in any strategic phase. Place a disrupted marker on one enemy stack in a zone adjacent to a Soviet-controlled zone containing a Soviet mobile stack. Follow the enemy up to his grave. That will get discarded. And... Victory or death, which will also get discarded for resources. Um, I think we'll toss the for the motherland as well for resources to max the Soviets back out. Up to six, and then I think they'll have to discard I think they'll still have to discard down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, they will. They will discard Nazi real politic, because they're probably not destroying anything for that. Okay, so strategic phase, no withdrawals, no upgrades. They do have reinforcements coming. They get another lend lease. They get a lend lease marker in. Um, this one I think goes to Onega. Then they'll get a Cav Mech one, which they'll put in Stalingrad. Then they can place these. I think anywhere they can trace unlimited supply. So they'll put these right outside of Gorky and. Ryazan. Alright, so that's it for replacements. Reserves. They don't have anything in reserve right now. And offensives. They have to declare at least one major offensive. Are they going to try to take Moscow back here? This is probably going to be a total nightmare, but... Yeah, I think they're going to declare a major offensive in Moscow. And try to take it back. Question is... Yaroslav is is adjacent to Moscow, so there's gonna be a there's gonna be a bloodbath in Moscow. So for the movement phase, I think that stack will move in. We'll stack these to. Eh, we'll stack with the shock aren't actually no. We'll stack with the Crimean. Move them into Tula. They'll stack and move one as well. And they'll stack. Uh, that's not a point. A point of the stack. All right. So now we're into the combat phase, and we're we're gonna have quite a bloodbath on our hands here. So I will declare the southwest front stack as our main attacker, and the Germans are getting support. The Germans are gonna get support from the fourth Panzer, and then the. This stack will be our primary defender. The Soviets will be getting support from these two stacks. And this will be an assault, so we'll need to calculate based on that. Let's see, for the attacker, they have a strength of five, six, seven for the Soviets to one, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine for the Germans. So right now the Soviets are down two. The Germans have their card that they flip over. Another three, so they go up to 12. The Germans may hold Moscow here with another one. So that brings the Soviets up to eight. That's a defender, that's a defender plus four. Assault is defeated. Lead attacker retreats one zone, then loses one step. So the Western Front will retreat back to Gorky, then they'll lose a step. So we'll go back to the destroyed units. Support is all done. That support's all done. That's a breeze through the combat phase. Reserve phase, they don't have anything to deploy. Used marker phase, all the used markers come back. All right, then done. The Germans checking the Soviets' war war aims. They don't control Kiev, so they don't get the score on either one. Then the last war goal for the Soviets. 
Partisans and Moscow, but since we're not playing with the Partisans, they actually won't get to score for that. All right, so we're back into turn, so now we're into turn six, and this is it for the game. Technically, we would check for instant victory, but I don't think... Actually, wait a second. If the, the player controls at least four of his opponent's six war aim sites, I think the Germans control two right now. They've got Leningrad, Moscow, and that's it right now for the war aim sites. And the weather has just transitioned to mud, plus the Germans, when we check the war initiative, the Germans have... Tw of 12 war status points to the Soviets, 5, so the Germans get the initiative back. Actually, they would get the initiative back anyway. Soviet industry now comes out as the event for the turn, and industry sends... All right, that's just two extra upgrades that they can spend. And distributing units. Those will come out during the strategic phase, but we have cards... Actually, we have combat marker phase, which the Germans will reset. And then we'll start off with a new offensive card for the Germans. Let's see, that one's discarded to that deck. That one goes to the Soviet offensive deck. So for the Germans, the offensive. Hitler orders an attack. Play immediately. Discard all X cards in your hand as major offensives for next turn, discarding those that can't be used. All right, then we have four event cards, which we'll have to discard down. Two, three, four. First up, we find counter blow during any support step. Discard all Soviet support markers from the battle if they don't have armor. Then draw an event card. A war is not lost until you consider it lost. We'll have to remember that. Bottom of the barrel, which will get tossed because we can't use it for the years. Operational moves at the end of the Soviet movement phase. Give a move to one supplied German stack and you may deploy one unit from your reserve. Don't fight a battle for nothing. That can also get tossed most likely and fortified lines which those will get tossed for resources. Actually we'd have to toss cards anyway. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we'll just dump. Um, actually, we'll keep the operational moves and we'll discard. We'll discard rookie commanders. One, two, three. Oh, um, I think I was tossing. I wanted to keep that. Just trying to think through what I wanted to keep. I think five, six was what I wanted to keep. All right, so we have all X cards like that. Geez, as major offensives for next turn. So discarding those that can't be used. That one can't be used. And we've got these for three major offensives. Ah, uh, wait, I forgot we had that major offensive. It wouldn't have made a difference anyway because the Soviets would have still had to retreat. All right, so three major offensives, but I think we only need... Um, we might be fine. We might be able to work with this. Okay, so that brings us into the strategic phase now. No withdrawals, no upgrades. We do have a reinforcement. The, the second Hungarian will bring that forward to Minsk because we still control that. Then we have replacements, reserves, and offenses. We can actually bring this lift, off, lift float two back to we'll have it support the 4th and 16th army. They're going to try to are they going to try to punch their way into Vorenz this turn? Probably not. But 
might be tempting to try to send them down towards Stalingrad. Stalingrad. That's a zero. That's back down to zero as well. We're at 12 to 5 war status for the Germans right now. Um, what do we want to do with the Germans? We're in the movement phase right now. So I think we could probably... Probably stack these together and send them one, two. We'll spend a support marker so so that so the eleventh army and the third Romanian don't get disrupted. Um, when can we play that move during the play at the end of the Soviet movement phase? So we wouldn't be able to play that now anyway. Um, okay, so that probably wasn't that great. Uh, do I try to remove the threat from around Moscow is now is the next question. Uh, the Southern Front could go for Stalingrad, but I don't think that's a good idea either. Or the, actually, no, that's the Southern Front. I couldn't send them after Stalingrad anyway. Um, yeah, I think the Germans will probably just plan on trying to remove the threat from around Moscow at this point. So, yeah, I think we'll just move into the, I think we'll just move into the combat phase at this point. So, we'll have the Luftflot 1 plan on trying to remove the threat from around Moscow from the third Caucasus and the Maritime stack. They can't reach out to anybody for support because there's nothing adjacent. And I don't think the Germans will worry about it either, so that'll be another assault. Let's see, seven to two. And then since that's an assault, the Soviets are down five. Do they want to commit a card to this? I think they... They'll commit Zukov for three to go up to five. And then the Germans will commit a one. They'll commit a one to go up to eight. Then we'll flip to the top cards of each deck over. Right now the Germans are winning by three. Germans are winning by two, and the Germans are winning by two. So attacker plus two, target retreats one zone, and an attacker advance. So the fourth panzer is still in Moscow to defend it from any threats. And I think that's it for the combat phase, so we'll pick up the so reserve phase, we'll blow through that because we don't have anything in the reserve. Then the used marker phase, these this would be flipped over to done, but we'll we didn't bother flipping that over. Then the objective phase will score war points, we'll score war goal points, which is all of maybe one because of Lvov. No, that's Kiev. No, Lvov. Yeah, we do score for that, but we won't score for Sevastopol because we couldn't take that. And then I won't be drawing a new war status card for the Germans because this is the last turn of the game. So, speaking of the last turn of the game, let's go to the Soviets' last turn of the game. All right, so the Soviets will be able to trace supply. Everything's fine there. So they'll draw an offensive card. That would be for next turn. So the Soviets... Find Mars Jupiter, which they actually can't use because it's the 42 43. Then they'll draw four event cards 3 4. They will draw. Samen Timoshenko, playing any support step, add support markers on up to two supplied Soviet stacks, or a battle of three or more is a DR if you have armor, then draw one card. We have fine troops, they are inured. All right, then part is an offensive, which will get tossed. Actually, no, we can use that in 42. 
play in your strategic phase, flip all atrocity markers to their partisan side, or remove from the map board any atrocity markers, but I'm using... I'm not using the partisans or atrocities in this playthrough. Infiltration assaults. Play in the support step of the Soviet combat phase. The battle result is an AA if a Soviet leg stack was the attacker. In the Soviet army, it takes more courage to retreat than advance. And... Not a step back. Play in the support step of the German combat phase. During this combat phase, before each battle is drawn, you can decide that a B DR result will be a BB. Die, but do not retreat. Okay, looking at the Soviet's hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, they're going to discard Maski Rov Rovka. Infiltration assaults and partisan offensive, since we're not playing with the atrocities or the partisans. Okay. All right, so that's the card phase. Strategic phase, no withdrawals. Uh, we do have no upgrades. We do have reinforcements. Air armies go to the Soviet air units. Uh, tank group two and the Northern Caucasus, which will put the Northern Caucasus and Gorky and the tank group two and Varenz. Looking at the situation for the, okay, those replacements, no reserves, and we're probably not declaring offensives at this point because I don't think the Soviets are really going to be able to throw the Germans out of any of their positions right now. So I think the Soviets are just going to blow through that. No reserves to deploy. No combat markers deployed. Objective phase, they're probably not scoring for their war goals. Nope. Partisans in Moscow. So they lost Moscow on that. Now that the game's over, let me check how the... So I believe now that it's the end of the scenario, at the end of the game, if there was no instant victory, okay, so let me, actually, it's probably going to be related to the scenario rules. Um, ah, here we are. So we're at the end of turn six. The German, after turn six is done, the German player can, wins if he controls the major city of Moscow, plus one other Soviet war aim site, or six major Soviet cities, or is at least a 10-point worst status point advantage over the Soviet player. Otherwise, the Soviet player wins. So actually, the German player will win, and it's kind of hard to see, but let me see if I can zoom in on Moscow. So it's fairly faint, but the hammer and sickle there indicates a indicates a war aim city and as we turn the camera just slightly we see that Leningrad is also a war aim site also controlled by the Germans so the Germans actually have won this scenario so with that let's move back up top for the after action report in a bit of a reversal in history the Germans have actually won Operation Barbarossa. And if you remember during the playthrough of Hitler's Reich I did a couple months ago, the Germans actually got to Moscow in Hitler's Reich as well when they did Barbarossa there. Now, as far as this game goes, whoo boy, this was... You probably were listening to me throughout the entire video, but this was a very confusing game for me to play. I'm actually going to turn the change my battery out again for a second before I continue with this one. As I was saying, this game, to put it mildly, was extremely confusing for me to learn. So unlike with Hitler's Reich, where I was able to go find the living rules and actually kind of make a little bit more sense of this game, this one didn't even have living rules that I could turn to. So I was still very confused. And you heard me, go, you've probably heard me going very, very, very slowly through this one. But this was definitely a head scratcher for me. I think there's... Just enough, I think there's just enough depth here that I, well, there's enough that somebody who, who could be more patient with this one could get a lot out of this, but I'm going back and forth on if this one is going to hit the channel or not. I had the Stalingrad scenario scheduled for later this year, but I don't know. 
As we look at the back of the box, I'm going to pull that out for a second here once I make this cooperate with me. Come on. There we go. So the back of the box advertises that this is perfect for both veteran players and newcomers. I would say, knowing then, knowing then what I know now, I would probably bypass this game, honestly. Just as a novice war gamer, there was a lot taken in this one, and you heard, again, you heard that I was getting very confused during this one, but sometimes you just gotta play games that, sometimes you gotta try things out and find what you like and what you don't. So this game, this game kind of ended up being a flop on that front, but that will conclude this playthrough of Absolute War, The Russian Front 1941-45. So we're not quite done with the video yet though because I just got something in in the last couple days. So we're going to have a small product unboxing as well. This just came in from somebody on Board Game Geek earlier today. So let's go ahead and crack this open and see what's in here. I'm expecting this to be a couple more games that have been catching my eye off and on. So let's find out and see what we've got in here. Tape job is not bad at all. Okay, cool. A little bit of bubble, but I can deal with that. And first up, we have a copy of Target for Tonight from Legion War Games. Now, you've seen me unbox Target for Today on the channel. This is actually the British night bombing campaign. So it's the exact same game, essentially, on that. There's the back of the box. We want to take a look at that. We'll get that off shot. And I see the other item that we've got in here. We have... We also have Tiger Leader from DVG. World War II ground combat solitaire strategy game. Take a look at the back of the box on that one. Cool. I'll plan on, I'm planning on going deep on both of those this weekend, but that will do it completely for this playthrough of Absolute War, The Russian Front, 1941-45. to This is probably going to go up sometime Thursday as I'm filming this. It's Wednesday night, pretty late. I think I, under, I think I way underestimated how long this video was going to end up being. I had to change my battery at least three times, and the charge wasn't holding for some reason. I'll figure out what's going on there. But I'm starting to ramble, so let's wrap this video up. Sunday we're headed back to the Atlantic, as we recall Commandant Zimmer from r, r to go on patrol in the Hunters. As for next week, we're headed back out to the Marvel Comics universe to play Marvel Champions. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.